now also in Bangladesh. Flooding happening there in Bangladesh. And earthquakes happen in Afghanistan. And massive killing happened here in Texas, unfortunately, in schools. All of these, as we look at them, you wonder what's happening to the world. But then you see that the Prophet he gave us some prophecies about these things as signs for the Day of Judgment. You know, I couldn't help but pondering over these things. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for the people of Afghanistan, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and alleviate the suffering of the people of Bangladesh, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for all of them. SubhanAllah, looking at the, the events of life today as we see them and as uh, these events are evolving more frequently, you cannot help it but looking back again at the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, for, for guidance. Looking and understanding what was going on from the lens of the Prophet وسلم, sunnah. It was reported that one day the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he saw the sky changing. The colors of the sky were changing. It was probably maybe it was dust and it turned into yellow and then the orange, and the Prophet ﷺ, he was scared. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, she, saw, she said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ in his house, in the, in the room, he was pacing back and forth, back and forth. And when she told him what was going on, Ya Rasulullah, what, what's happening, what's happening? He, so he put into the sky, like, look, don't you see? And for us, probably when we look at these events and these phenomena, probably we see just natural event, that's all. But for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he reflects on the qawl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, when Allah as well spoke about the punishment that came to those people in Median. When they were told, look, the wind is blowing, probably it's going to have some sort of like a, a severe weather condition, but for them, says, don't worry about it. It's just sahabu markum. It's only clouds. It's going to be just rain. That's all. But punishment came with that. So the Prophet sallallahu was wondering if that's the sign that Allah spoke about because Allah Azza wa mentioned at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu you know, coming for the Ummah as a messenger, that اقتربت, اقتربت that the hour is becoming closer and closer. For him, it could be the moment. So that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu always terrified. And for us, my dear brothers and sisters, it's 1400 years since this hadith was reported to us. 1400 years since Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, the hour is coming closer and closer and closer. And for us, it's definitely much closer than the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this khutbah, I want to share with you one hadith that was reported in Sahih Bukhari, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about six of the signs that we probably want to see frequently now in our time that give us an indication it's coming closer. Hadith Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu ardah qala al-Nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam la taqumu al-sa'am the Messenger of Allah said in this hadith the hour, which means the last day, will not be established shall not be established hatta yuqbad al-ilm until knowledge is taken away and he talks about religious knowledge maybe science is all over the place but people those who know how to pray how to answer questions regarding to subject of faith and ibad and worship it becomes less and less subhanallah then he says qal wa earthquakes becoming more frequent wa taqarabu zaman the time becomes constrained, it becomes closer. وَتَظْهَرُ الْفِتَنْ Affliction and trials becomes more common. وَيَكْثُرُ الْهَرْجِ And death becomes common. In this case, he talks about, he used the word harj. So Sahaba themselves were wondering, what's the meaning of that word? Ya Rasulullah, what's the meaning of the word harj? قَالَ كَثْرَةُ الْقَتْلِ Basically, mass killing as we know it today. قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ حَتَّى يَكْثُرَ فِيهِمِ الْمَالِ and then also wealth, prosperity, will become so common. Fayafid. And that wealth overflows. Let's talk about this hadith. So the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, describing to us six things. He spoke about this 1400 years ago. And he's saying these are the signs of the Day of Judgment. You take them as indicators that we're getting closer. So the first one, he says, the loss of knowledge, Islamic knowledge. The shari knowledge. In the age... In the age of social media and the age of the internet, there is no time better to describe this hadith than today. No one is willing to listen to, a, to an hour lecture anymore. We stopped even watching anything that is longer than seven seconds. Why is that? Because you just look for TikTok. And now you look for was on TikTok. That's it. You just want a quick answer to it. And no one is willing to listen to 15 minutes or even 12 minutes TED Talk 
just about subject that is very important. Knowledge is just dissolving. And as a result, people don't appreciate ilm and knowledge anymore. Why? Because I can get it on TikTok. It's easy. I can get it on anywhere, social media, subhanAllah. And Allah knows how it's going to look like in the future. If in our time we still have, alhamdulillah, a glimpse of the meaning of having ilm and knowledge, at least we still have trace of these long lectures or seminars or books even, subhanAllah. Allah knows how it's going to look like in the future. So we see the Prophet sallam, says in the hadith, قَالَ وَإِنَّ مَنْ أَشْرَاطِ السَّاعَةِ أَنْ يُلْتَمَسَ الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ الصَّغَائِرِ In this hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallam, said that one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, that knowledge will be sought with what? Al-Asagir. Meaning what? Those the young ones, those who don't have that much knowledge really. Why so? It's about popularity these days. It's not about the depth of knowledge really. Which explains the other hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says, He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the thing that I fear for you, the, fear, the thing that I fear for you the most on that, on that day. He says, I'm not fearing for anything more than this. Every hypocrite who has, who has sweet tongue. Alim al lisan, which means he has the knowledge of the tongue, which is basically that literal translation. His knowledge is on his tongue. So when they speak, they're sweet talkers. They speak sophisticated words. But what type of knowledge they have, only Allah knows. And again, if we look at our time, it is happening. The preservation of knowledge these days, it becomes an amana in each and every one of us. In the other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned among the signs of the Day of Judgment, يُقْبَضُ الْعِلْمِ Knowledge will be taken away from the people. And the Sahaba, they were wondering, what does that mean? قَالَ بِقَبْضِ الْعُلَمَاء by taking away these knowledgeable people. It's so hard for us today to find some of these great ulama that you can tell they have traditional work and studies of the knowledge to that, to that meaning, meaningful ilm and knowledge to us. It's so hard to find them these days. And that's why every one of them passes away. It's over. An entire generation of knowledge goes away with them. And we have a new culture of seeking knowledge. And as a result, everything becomes just seven seconds Bits of knowledge, that's all. And that's one of the, the signs of the Day of Judgment. The second thing the Prophet ﷺ said, he says, Qala zalazal. Earthquakes happen. You know, it started at the time of the Prophet ﷺ as well. Some of these shaking, some of these actually earthquakes happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. In the hadith, Rasulullah ﷺ was hiking with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar and Uthman, and we were going up the mountain of Uhud. And then it started shaking. And then the Prophet Sallallahu with his foot, he stroked the, the ground and he says, Uthbat Uhud, calm down. Nabi, it's only a prophet, a Siddiq, Abu Bakr, and two martyrs. Talking about Uthman and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumma wardahuma. One of those prophets of the Prophet Sallallahu at the time as well. And then as we can see today, with what's happening, subhanAllah, we see it more frequently these days. Every now and then you hear another, another tragedy happening somewhere in the world. An earthquake happens in Turkey. It happens in Iran, happened in Europe, everywhere. Sometimes even places we didn't even think that would happen. So all these things are also signs of the day of judgment. Sometimes we see it the other way around. Not just, you know, sh the ground is shaking. Even, subhanAllah, as a result of that, the volcanoes are erupting. And with that, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned on the day, before the day of judgment will be a lot of khasf and a lot of also uh, the, the, the earth will swallow whatever actually is on top of it. And also he said that will be actually qadh, which means the sky will be raining rocks. What does that mean? Could that be the eruption of volcanoes? Could that be meteors? Well, Allah knows what's going to happen. At least for us here, we see something come on every now and then. When the hail starts actually, when it starts raining hail, instead of just rain, frozen ice, the size of a baseball sometimes. That is scary, Jemaah. If it continues like this, that is the sign of the Day of Judgment. The third one, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he says, zaman." Time will come closer. Like we say, time shrinks. What does it mean exactly? The ulama, they give different opinions, different meanings for the time, how it really shrinks. And I guess we all understand today, when it comes to the subject of time, everybody's running out of time. Everybody, none of us, wakes up in the morning saying, Alhamdulillah, I have enough time to finish my work. 
And at the end of the day, we all have the same, the same regret. Oh man, I didn't finish anything. I'm falling behind on this and that. We're running out of time, all the time, Jama. Although the time didn't change, it's 24 hours. So what does it mean? Some ulama, they say the barakah is gone. We wake up at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning to start our day. And we sleep past midnight. Where is the barakah and the blessing of that day? As the Prophet said, that the barakah will be at the, in the early hours of the day. So we're missing the barakah of our time. Some ulama, they say, it actually means that the people, the people of that time will become closer, geographically speaking, meaning what? Transportation makes it easy for them to travel through time zones. Today we call it jet lag. What is jet lag anyway? You live in different time zones at the same time. That's so hard until you adjust again. That's another sign of it. Some ulama, they say, actually, it's not just even that. What happens, generations start shrinking. Because in the past, as the culture moves slowly, so in 50 years, people live the exact same tradition and culture. But nowadays, every few years, a new generation comes out with a whole different culture. If you check the social media, that can tell you the generation of people. Different tool of social media is used by a different generation. And if today you use Facebook, for example, probably most probably people, they would say, oh, you're, you're, too, you're too old. Although it wasn't too long ago. Every generation is now have a different culture of their own. That's how the time shrinks as well too. There is so much change happening in our time and all these are signs of the Day of Judgment. Number four, the Prophet ﷺ says, وَتَكْتُرُ الْفِتَنِ Afflictions will become so common. What does that exactly mean? Sophisticated life means everything can break so easily. With our time, with our lifestyle that we're having, we start having problems with our cars, our budgets, our jobs, our house, the plumbing, this, that, all these easy little things. And then as society gets sophisticated, you have on a, on a, on a, on a bigger scale, problems and afflictions within the community itself. And then around the world, the fitan are so many. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned on the Day of Judgment, before the Day of Judgment, he said, Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, bil a'mal, make sure to do good deeds. So many good deeds. Fitan and kakita alayl mudlim. Otherwise, you are going to face these trials and afflictions like the darkness of the night. Meaning you cannot see through it. You're blinded completely by that darkness. And he says, as an example, قال, You wake up in the morning with strong belief, with conviction in your heart. You're so strong in your iman your faith. By the end of the day, he lost it. He has so much doubt in his faith. Sometimes in the evening, you have so much iman and faith. By the morning, it's gone. The fitan are so many, every time you grab a phone, you read something, you watch something, you read something, it affects you and it hurts you. And suddenly you have doubts again and again and again. Those trials and fitan are becoming so common. May Allah protect us from the Ya Rabbil Alameen. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, death will become very common. I don't think this is like anything like our time, subhanAllah. And the Prophet is describing those mass killings by saying in the other hadith, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم, قال لا تذهب الدنيا, the dunya, this world is not going to go away, means the day of judgment will not be established. حتى يأتي زمان, until a time comes in. القاتل لا يدري فيما قتل. The one who kills had no idea what he's killing for. والمقتول لا يدري فيما قتل. And the victims don't even know what they were killed for. Isn't that what happens in Uvalde in Texas? Until this day, we're wondering what was the motive of this guy who just did what he did. Until this day. And who were, who were killed? Kids, innocent children. No one knows why this happened, Allah Mustaan. This never happened before like this. These are the signs of the Day of Judgment. May Allah protect us from this, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And finally, the Prophet Sallallahu says, قَالْ وَيَكْثُرُ الْمَالِ حَتَّى يَفِيلُ Wealth and prosperity will become so common. See, my dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu warns us against two types of fitan and trials. He goes, fitna al darra the trial and the affliction of al-darra, which means poverty and difficulty and hardships. The generations before us, before the generation of the oil and this technology, they went through all of these difficulties and hardships. And then he says, then comes after that, fitna to sarra the trial and the affliction of a sarra prosperity. There is so much wealth until it starts overflowing. What's the meaning of overflowing, a jama'ah? 
people even, they kill themselves because they just don't know what to do with, what, with their lives anymore. They have so much wealth, but it's not, it's not satisfying to them. And people throw, throw the money right and left. No calculation of consequences of that money. That's another trial and fitna that we have today, Allah Musta'an. People, they're spending right and left, sometimes even more than what they earn. But it's still there because they believe the money is going to come. It's always there for them. My dear brothers and sisters, these are signs of the day of judgment. And as we see this, we're coming closer and closer to that end of time. And our duty as believers to look into all these and reflect on them. What is my duty towards these events? Yes, I need to help those who go through difficult and hardship to make it easier for them. But at the same time, I need to take my personal, personal uh, reminder from these things. Getting ready. So when this happens, at least I have my excuse before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرة ما ما بعد. My dear brothers and sisters, so what do we do with this reminder anyway? Well, here's two things I want to share with you, inshallah ta'ala. Number one is to keep your heart always attached to this reminder. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 1400 years ago, He said, اقترب للناس حسابهم. He said, the time of people's judgment has drawn near to them. وهم في غفلة معرضون. But they're completely heedless about it. Living in complete oblivious to this. No one cares about what's going on, what's happening to them. We see the signs with our own eyes, but we're completely not reflecting on them. He says, whatever they could come to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't pay attention to it. Because their hearts are so detached and only attached to this dunya. Make sure that you recalibrate. Bring your heart again to this reminder. Look, this dunya is temporary. It doesn't last forever. So be prepared for it. How do I do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا you all repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Draw yourself nearer to Allah azza wa jal. Come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single day as a reminder for myself, how can I bring myself closer to Allah today? Every single day. And before you go to sleep, you also think about it. Tomorrow, how if I survive and if I live that day, how can I bring myself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Make this commitment, my dear brothers and sisters. And alhamdulillah, Next week, inshallah ta'ala, the first 10 days of the Hijjah will begin. A season that is nothing like any times of the year, as the Prophet ﷺ described. These 10 days, any good deeds is better than anything you do throughout the whole year. Make sure to dedicate more time of your day and night, inshallah ta'ala, for these 10 days. Mark your calendars. Don't put any excuses. Relive Ramadan in these first 10 days of the Hijjah, inshallah ta'ala, hopefully. Or bring us back again where we, need to, where we should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima alamtana. Inna ka anta al-alimu al-hakim. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha. Anta waliyuha mawlaha. Ibad Allah, inna Allah malakatu salluna ala nabi. Ya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallimu barak ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Warda Allahumma an khulafa al-rashidina bi bakr wa umar wa athmana wa alihi wa ansar al-sahabati ajma'in. Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan la yawm al-deen wa aqam al-salaam.